the all new Samsung Galaxy A53 versus the all new Redmi Note 11 Pro. Which of these two smartphones should you buy? Or which is actually better and which offers the best overall value for your money? In this video, we're going to find out. For the price, the Samsung Galaxy A53 costs about 230,000 Naira or $400. While the Redmi Note 11 Pro here costs about 160,000 Naira or $285 for the variant that I have here. The price difference alone shows a huge gap between the two. About what comes in the box of these two smartphones, as you can see here, the Redmi Note 11 Pro comes with a complete accessory which includes a huge 67 watt charger, a TPU case, a USB Type C cable, some paper works, and a SIM ejector tool. While the Samsung Galaxy, on the other hand, comes with the smartphone itself, a USB Type C charging cable, a user start guide, and a SIM ejector tool. It is very clear that the Redmi device, while cheaper, offers a lot more out of the box. It is so sad to pay a huge amount and get nothing out of the box. Samsung wants you to spend more money on accessories even after paying more for the device. The A53 supports only 25 watt charger and charging it with a 25 watt charger took about 1 hour 50 minutes to charge from 0 to 100%. The Redmi Note 11 Pro with its crazy 67 watt super fast charger took only 43 minutes to charge from 0 to 100% which is mind blowing. Now you tell me which is awesome. Is it the awesome pitch Samsung Galaxy A53? No. So in this case, the Redmi Note 11 Pro is a clear winner. For build quality, the Redmi Note 11 Pro has a glass back and front, while the frame is made out of plastic. The A53, just as its predecessor, it is made entirely out of plastic. While it looks decent and won't shatter if you happen to drop it, it doesn't look as good or feel as premium as the Redmi Note 11 Pro. I'm not even going to lie, the A53 feels cheap compared to the Redmi Note 11 Pro. But both smartphones support some sort of IP certification. Okay, the A53 has an IP67 rating, which means that it can survive up to one meter for about 30 minutes underwater. While the Redmi Note 11 only supports IP53 dust and water splash resistance. Please don't try what you're seeing here with your smartphone because it might not survive it. So for build quality, the Redmi Note 11 Pro is a clear winner here. Most people want to go swimming with a smartphone, but get a case in case you happen to drop the redmi device now moving on to the external features of both smartphones the samsung galaxy a53 and the redmi Note 11 pro comes with a usb type c charging port at the bottom a microphone a speaker grill and a hybrid sim tray hybrid in the sense that it can only take two sim at once and without a micro sd card or one sim card with an sd card only on the right side of both smartphones, we have the power button and the volume rocker keys. On the Redmi device, the power button serves as a fingerprint scanner and it is super fast. How fast? Well, it is faster than the in-display fingerprint scanner of the Samsung Galaxy A53. No contest here. However, the in-display fingerprint scanner seems a bit more futuristic. But you tell me, which one do you prefer in the comment section below? On top of both smartphones, the Redmi device offers more functionality like an IR blaster that you can use to control your home electronics. Additional microphone and a headphone jack, which is obviously missing on the Samsung Galaxy A53. I mean, Samsung, what have we done to you? The only thing that you get on top of the Samsung Galaxy is additional microphone. Can someone tell me what is going on here? Like, what? No headphone jack on a mid-range device? Come on, Samsung. On the display side of things, both smartphones come with a 1080p Super AMOLED display with support for 120Hz high refresh rate. The Redmi display is slightly bigger at 6.67 inch while the A53 comes in at 6.5 inch. Both smartphones use Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection and both displays look okay. For media consumption, both looks very okay. They are vibrant and sharp. Colors look nice and both are well saturated. Both offers options to choose between vivid, saturated and standard colors. You can also manually adjust the display colors for your liking on both smartphones. So on the display side of things, it is a tie for me. The Redmi Note 11 Pro that I have here comes with a MediaTek Helio G96 CPU which is a 12 nanometer processor while the Samsung Galaxy A53 comes with an Exynos 1280 CPU that is fabricated using a 5 nanometer fabrication process. The lower the nanometer, the better the efficiency and it shows here. The RAM on the A53 is 6GB and can be expanded up to 6GB through virtual memory technology or memory fusion technology or whatever. The Redmi on the other hand comes with 8GB of RAM and can be extended to 11GB through memory extension. While I was downloading and to do benchmarks and running some tests, the temperature was slightly higher on the Redmi device than that of the Samsung device. On the Antutu benchmark scores, the A53 got slightly higher scores of 
366,741, while the Realme device got a score of 314,866. Now moving on to Geekbench scores, the A53 got a better single core score of 641 and a multi core score of 1793. The Redmi device got a single core score of 487 and a multi core score of 1752. Then on 3D Mark, which is the benchmark test that will really test out the graphics performance, the Samsung Galaxy A53 clearly destroys Redmi 11 Pro as you can see here. Just take a look at the average frame rate per second. As you can see here, the A53 is a clear winner, but how does all of this translate to an actual performance or real-world use? Well, performance on both smartphones are fine, but the A53 feels slightly smoother, a little bit more refined, which I think has to do with One UI 4.1. It goes to show how well optimized Samsung One UI is, and with Android 12 on board, it makes it super awesome. The Redmi device is running on Android 11 out of the box with MIUI 13, which is a shame for a brand new device released in 2022. But I know for sure that uh, Xiaomi will definitely update it to Android 12 soon enough. So when it comes to raw performance, I would say raw performance is really good on both smartphones. Gaming is fine on both smartphones, but the Samsung Galaxy A53 is much better with gaming and overall performance. Most graphic settings are set to max on the A53 in some games, while the Redmi device uses high graphics and medium settings. If your concern is about gaming between these two smartphones, the Samsung Galaxy A53 is the right device for you. However, I still believe that the Samsung Galaxy A53 will even get better with software update because some games are not fully optimized for the Exynos 1280. Now, let's talk about the camera on both smartphones. The Redmi Note 11 Pro comes with a quad camera behind that comprises 108MP main sensor, an 8MP ultra-wide camera, a 2MP macro lens, and a 2MP depth sensor. The A53, on the other hand, comes bundled with a 64 megapixels main sensor, a 12 megapixels or wide camera, a 5 megapixels macro lens, and a 5 megapixels depth sensor. Images coming from both smartphones are very okay and decent. I like how details are present on both images, colors look nice, and dynamic range is good on both. However, the Samsung device is a lot better with well exposed images, and I also feel like dynamic range is slightly better on the Samsung Galaxy A53. I just love how well exposed Samsung images appear without much overexposure. Skin tone on both phones are great, but the A53 manages skin tone better. It just makes your skin pop with fine detail. For portrait shots, both are great, but the Redmi does it here for me. Take a look at it and tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. Moving on to wide angle images, the A53 just appears better, with good colors and best overall detail. The Redmi Ultra wide image looks flat in comparison and it lacks detail. Moving on to macro shots, again the A53 is much better with good details and good colors. Moving on to the selfie camera, the Redmi device has a 16 megapixels camera while the Samsung Galaxy A53 comes with a 32 megapixels selfie camera. Both smartphones are doing excellently well, but the Samsung device is slightly better. By default, the Redmi has skin smoothing effect applied, and I'm sure that's how most people will take pictures with it. The A53 selfie image is sharp with much details, and it is a device you should get if you want a very good selfie camera. Selfie portrait is very okay as well on both smartphones, but the Samsung image is still the preferred one. Just look at the contrast level on the Samsung image and compare it to the Redmi image. Hey guys, so this is the front facing camera of the Samsung Galaxy A52 and the Redmi Note 11 Pro. The Samsung is currently shooting in 4K 30 frames per second, while the Redmi Note 11 Pro can only shoot in 1080p 30 frames per second. And the difference is very clear. The Samsung is brighter sharper with more details and even dynamic range as you can see here if you look at the sky a little bit it's somehow washed away on the Redmi device although it's still very close to that of the Samsung smartphone but the details on the Redmi Note 11 Pro is not even close to what the Samsung device is offering right now how do you guys like it let me know in the comment section below let me also know what you think about the audio quality as well because I can't really tell from here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure both are going to be so great when it comes to audio. But as for video quality here, using the front-facing camera, the Samsung device is a clear winner here. Like, just take a look at this. Hey guys, so this is a rare footage from both smartphones, the Samsung Galaxy A53 and the Redmi Note 11 Pro. It is so sad that the Redmi Note 11 Pro cannot shoot in 4K, you can only shoot in 1080p, 30 frames per second. And the difference is clear. 
from the footage here as you can see the samsung footage is quite detailed very sharp and bright and one thing to keep in mind is that when you're shooting in 4k on the samsung device there's no video stabilization if you want your footage stabilized you have to switch to 1080p mode on the samsung device so let me switch to a 1080p mode on the samsung galaxy f53 let's just see how it compares to the redmi note 11 pro in terms of video quality and video stabilization all right guys so this is a 1080p mode on both smartphones and both smartphone has video stabilization turned on so let's go ahead and run a little bit and see which performs the best it seems the redmi device is a lot stable Okay, let's run again. Ah, when it comes to video stabilization, I think the Redmi device is doing a lot better than the Samsung device. Uh, but what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Okay. Overall, on the camera department, the Samsung Galaxy A53 wins. Now moving on to the battery department, both smartphones come with a 5000mAh battery and they are very okay. These two smartphones can comfortably carry you for a full day on a single charge. During my Antutu benchmark test and other tests that I carried out, I noticed that the Redmi device was slightly hotter than the Samsung device and in return drains the battery slightly faster but the difference was negligible. However, the Redmi device comes with a super fast charger out of the box that can juice up the device in just 43 minutes and that is crazy. On the Samsung part, you have to buy original Samsung charger before you can even think of fast charging. Think about that. The speakers on both smartphones are equally loud and I can't say one is louder than the other. Both smartphones got the stereo speakers that sound amazing. So that is it guys, a full comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A53 and the Redmi Note 11 Pro. The Redmi Note 11 Pro wins for looks, being the most affordable, external features and build quality. But the Samsung Galaxy A53 offers a lot more from the processing power to software overall camera quality and not to mention a promised four years of the updates from samsung however it is the more expensive device here it doesn't come with the most needed accessories as you can see here getting a certified samsung charger might be a little too expensive for most people but for the sake of this comparison the samsung galaxy a53 is the winner of this comparison kindly share your thoughts with me down in the comment section below let's discuss don't forget to like and share to help someone make a purchase decision Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the very next one. Bye-bye.